Well, thank you everybody for joining us. I know there's probably not gonna be too many people who realize our switch of time this Saturday. Um, We're live here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. And this will be um, episode, I think 108 or 109. Uh, It's awesome to have you with us. As you can see from the uh, title slide, we're gonna be talking, this is a first Saturday now. So stay with us because the first part of tonight will be the talk on Our Lady of Good Success. Very important for our times. And then we'll do a a short break. Brother Mark will um, power down and then start a new video. You can join us online for the first Saturday devotion, uh, which we'll walk you through. Now, let us begin with a prayer because today is an important day. August 6th is first and foremost a transfiguration, okay? where our Lord appeared in his glorified state before Peter, James, and John on Mount Tabor. But it's also the history date of the atomic bomb dropping on Hiroshima. And so we wanna pray for all those who were affected, um, that Our Lady warns, especially here of Our Lady of Good Success, that we need to find our way back. And so war is a negative effect of the bad fruit of not having God in our society. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you send the Holy Spirit down upon the world to bring us peace, to avoid ever to have nuclear war. Um, We pray for those victims, the repose of their souls who died in Hiroshima on this date, 1945. We pray for an enlightening of Christ, his glorified state in the hearts of all people, and that we may be transfigured like Christ was on the mountain, that we may be transformed and transfigured into another Christ here on earth. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And also, you're going to see when I get into this talk partway, August 6th, is actually a very important date in Our Lady of Good Success. So let us begin. This is very important. Our Lady of Buen and the last in success, um, Suceso, of the purification. This is Our Lady of Good Success. So basically, why is this so powerful? Every single prophecy that this was given to Mother Mariana, every single one has already come true, except one, except one. And we're going to talk about which one that is and if it'll happen or not. Now, this is very important because uh, we can look at the history here. The Conceptionist Sisters in Quito, Ecuador, have been spreading this devotion. That's Mother Mariana's community. Now, the English word, but here's interesting. I didn't know this seminary when I had a class and it was on Mary and we got into Marian apparitions. That's why I'm sharing a lot of what I learned in seminary with you. We didn't talk enough about Marian apparitions, but we talked about them some, the approved ones. Now, the English word for success is not what this devotion is about. You're not going to pray this novena to become promoted to the next general manager okay, or to get a bigger raise. This is not what this novena is for, all right? This word success may make some people believe we're talking the prosperity gospel, all right? No, we're not. This is not follow Jesus and you'll get a bigger car. Follow Jesus or you'll get a bigger house. Follow Jesus, you'll get a prettier wife. That is the prosperity gospel sweeping South America. Ironically, we're Ecuador, you know, Ecuador in this whole Central and South America, It's dangerous. It's not of the gospel. This is wrong. We have to be weary of it. Now, this isn't what it means. The official title of Our Lady of Good Success is Nuestra Signora Signora del Buen Suceso de la Purificación. All right. This is Our Lady of the Good Success or Good Event of the purification. Now, here's what's interesting. It translates, not as success, but as I just said, literally Our Lady of the good event of the purification. How different than the we take it as success. We're thinking more money, bigger house, like I said, promotion at work. 
This is actually translated literally, Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. Now, let's take a look at our next slide. This good event, and you can see here, this is a beautiful painting, isn't it? This painting of Our Lady being presented or presenting the child Jesus, that's one of the most beautiful paintings. Look at the imagery there. So basically, the good event refers to the purification and the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. So Christ the Redeemer here is offering himself. Now, the co-redemptrix, Mary, is offering Christ. And the Blessed Virgin is completely offering herself. This is the single greatest sacrifice and offering to ever take place in the temple. This is the good event we're talking about. Not good success in earthly terms, good event in the purification and the presentation. Now, her title would show support and safeguard of the faith during this current crisis. Everything about this uh, apparition was hidden for 400 years. It was meant, Mary said, to be released at the end of the 20th century. Now, it wasn't hidden, per se, that it wasn't allowed to be known. No, it's been known, but it's been kind of obscure. It's the problem that we have in our, our, our world today with the loss of spirit of sacrifice and the true religious spirit of self-offering. That's why this apparition is so important. We've lost sacrifice, and we have no understanding what it means today to give religious, this religious spirit of self-offering. That's the meaning of this devotion. It's not about more money, more fame, more riches. It's about understanding a greater sacrifice and self-offering. Now, while it's good to pray for success, I'm not saying it's not. It's fine in one sense. Don't lose the true meaning of this apparition. It is basically a misunderstanding to have Our Lady of Good Success without mentioning the purification. That's in the official title. Purification. We don't say that. In America, we don't say Our Lady of Good Success of the Purification or Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification, but that's the literal meaning. So now, <clears throat> this apparition happened 400 years ago, a little over, and it's really relevant today. Um, there's a, a great apologist named Matthew Arnold who I was ready to do a, a radio show with. We were going to co-host a radio show. And um, he's a great guy. If you've ever seen his work, let's... Um, Let's throw the new, next slide. Um, here's a picture of her. Matthew Arnold placed his entire apostolate under Our Lady of Good Success. This is a little-known apparition to Mary, of Mary, to Mother Mariana de, G G de Jesus Torres in Quito, Quito, Ecuador. So, in 1594, this began. Now... Mary said to her, I am Mary of good success. So that's why we accept that, kind of that title in English. Now, it was approved. I am doing approved apparitions here. It was approved in 1611 by the local bishop, but really mostly applies today. This is important because of our lack of faith and morals. So, in seven apparitions over 40 years, Mary appeared to Mother Mariana. Now, Mary appeared to her. Now, Mary, Mother Mariana is a servant of God, right? So, her canonization process is in progress. But let's look at our next slide. Here's a picture of Our Lady of Good Success. Now, Mary requested that a statue be made with her holding Jesus in her left arm, so you see Jesus in the statue there in her left arm and a crozier and keys in her right arm, all right? So the presence, this is important, the presence of the divine infant being held by Mary reminds us to Jesus through Mary. Mary is bringing Jesus to you or you to Jesus. The keys and the crozier, you see them? It's a little hard to see in that picture. 
but they symbolize Mary's rule as the perpetual abbess of the convent of the Conceptionist Sisters. Okay, what does all this mean? All right. Mary warned, she warned that after the mid 20th century, there would be an almost total corruption of faith and morals. And we're going to get into that. However, she offered a solution. She gave us a solution, devotion to Our Lady of Good Success. So that's tonight. So it isn't about the success of our accomplishments. It's really about what Mary wants to accomplish through us. It's really the, the success of Mary and how you let her use you. That's what the success is. All right. So she said, Mary, that this devotion would not become well known until the end of the 20th century. Do you know that in just like 20, I was reading somewhere like 2018 or 2016, I just read this. When you typed in Our Lady of Good Success, there was like 15,000 hits. Now in 2022, when you type in Our Lady of Good Success, there's tens of millions. It's becoming known just like Mary said. Now she promised that when it seems like evil has triumphed, which obviously it does, this will mark the arrival, she said, quote, this will mark the arrival of my hour when I, in a marvelous way, will dethrone the proud and cursed Satan, trampling him under my feet. So look at the next slide Brother Marco put up. This is clearly referencing Genesis 3.15. This is also the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, we believe, promised centuries later at Fatima. It all ties together. Now, the message of Our Lady of Good Success on the opposite of success is also not gloom and doom. A lot of us want to turn to it and say, oh my gosh, the end of the world. No, it's not. This prophecy is not about the end of the world. You know what it's about? On the contrary, it's a message of hope and consolation. Why? Because Our Lady did not say the end of the world was coming. What she did say as a marvelous restoration of the church would come, of what has been lost in the church and in the world would come back. Man, I can't wait for that. We need that desperately. So devotion to her under this title is actually a great consolation to the faithful in these difficult times. It's not gloom and doom in the end of the world. It's not success in a worldly sense of, like I said, greater things, it's something more important. So she promised, this is awesome, she also promised her good success to all who would help spread this devotion. So, pass this video on to other people. Find a link online that tells the story. Find another video about it, spread it, send it, share it. She promises good success. That means she's gonna work, accomplish things through you. Now, next slide. In 1906, she and her sister's remains were found incorrupt. Now, doing research on this, I found conflicting information. Some resources said that all of the sisters were incorrupt, which is incredible. Others did not. Said it was her and a couple others. So whatever you believe, we know that she was incorrupt. So they dug this up or found this in 1906. Now, the postulator for the cause of Mother Mariana has pointed out that all of the prophecies of Our Lady of Good Success have already been fulfilled. This is the postulator, not me saying this. I said it a few minutes ago, but it's not me. The postulator of her cause of canonization is saying everything has been fulfilled. Where do you read? What do you hear? Stay with us. Some of these prophecies. The only exception that has not happened yet is the restoration of the church. We're getting close. We're getting close. This promised restoration, I think, is in process. You know why? Look at the world coming back to God, even through technology now. 
Satan thought he had us at COVID. We've added hun- over hundreds of thousands of new people to our Marian family since COVID. People are rediscovering their faith. I got so many letters. Peter keeps a track. The stack is this high now. Father, from the live streams, I've come back to confession after 50 years. I've started going to mass again after 30 years. My daughter, my son have come back to the church. It's unbelievable. We get thousands of letters. God is using and something is happening. Just Thursday, we celebrated our employee picnic and we introduced the new guys are coming into the Marian community. Some of them are with us here tonight. God is bringing greater good. We are at great vocations. Great vocations. And you know what? Even if they're not called to the Marian Fathers and they're called somewhere else, a diocese or another religious community, or to be a father or a husband, their time here in the Marians will help them to be a better man. God bless them. God bless us. God bless you. So I think there's already a restoration scene. You know the scandal. Father, how could you say that about the scandal? Do you know that 95, I think it is, according to the Jacob study and the John Jay report, something like 95% of the cases of abuse are over 40 years old, 30 years old. The church is being purified. Praise be to God. Now, these signs, they're underway. Now, let's talk a little bit <clears throat> about Matthew Arnold's work and some of his work on Mary of Good Success and the restoration of the church. He said, we all know, obviously we all know, there's a crisis in the church right now, but many don't know that the Blessed Virgin, she prophesied the current crisis of faith and morals in the church four centuries ago. Many don't know this. Now, she offered, though, a remedy. She told us, devotion to her under this title, as I just mentioned. So from 1574 um, to 19, or, uh, 94 to 1634, basically 40 years, as I said, she became President Mary f- uh, seven times. And this, you know, it's funny, the devotion to Our Lady of Good Success Do you know how it began? It began as a plea for Mary's intercession for successful childbirth. That's why the title Success, Our Lady of Good Success, stuck. Because the tradition that was first used for this devotion, Our Lady of Good Success, was a prayer for Mary's intercession for successful childbirth. How much more is that needed in today's day of the age of abortion? Huh? Amazing. So the 16th century Spanish, buen, and this is, again, the word that we have to really focus on, suceso, great good success, meant great event. Let's talk a bit now about the statue. The statue is fascinating. In 1594, the Blessed Virgin first appeared to Mother Mariana, as we said, in Ecuador. Now, five years, if you don't think that you missed the boat, Listen to Mother Mariana. She missed the boat, and she's an incorruptible saint. Five years later, in 1599, Mary appeared and said, I want a statue to be made, holding the infant Jesus, as we said, in her left arm and a crozier and keys of the convent in her right arm. Now, she said this, in my left arm, place my divine child first so that men will understand how powerful I am in placating the divine justice and bringing the divine mercy. That's amazing. Obtaining mercy for every sinner. I lead them to my son. So that's how she has baby Jesus in her one hand. In her other, with the crozier and the keys, those symbolize her authority over the convent, as we mentioned. Now, Mother Mariana... She immediately did what Mary did, right? And said, fiat, fiat, yes, yes. No, she didn't. She insisted that she knew nothing about making statues, and so she didn't do it. Kind of sound familiar? God asking us to do something, we don't do it. So she said, no, mother, I don't know how to make statues. But Mary assured her. So to begin, the virgin asked Mother Mariani to take her measurements 
Can you picture this? You got the blessed mother there, and Mariani, and Mother Mariani is asked to take her measurements, like a tailor. I, I can't even imagine this. So she asked her to take her measurements, which I thought was really amazing, and for the statue, to be able to make the statue. So Mary said, measure me yourself with the Franciscan cincture that you wear around your waist, because her community was from the Franciscans. Place your cord in my right hand and touch the other end to my foot. Now, Mariana said that the cord was too short, but she looked up to see that the little infant Jesus holding the cord and stretched it miraculously all the way to Our Lady's forehead. So this was the first miracle. Now, Mother Mariana wanted to have the statue made, but she needed permission of her bishop. Okay? But she hesitated again because she was afraid. So 10 years went by without Mother acting on it. I keep thinking of my vocation. My vocation kept, God kept calling. I kept saying, no, Lord, you don't want me. No, no, year goes by, year goes by. No, Lord, you don't want me. No, year goes by, another year goes by. God can still work with you. Even if you think you've missed your boat, you haven't. It's never too late, never too late. All right, so anyway, in January 1610, Our Lady appeared again. Now she's getting a little sterner. Okay, and she warned Mother Mariani, Mariana not to delay anymore making the statue. So on her feast day, this is what's beautiful, the feast of Our Lady of Good Success, guess when it is? The presentation, February the 2nd, her feast day. But Mary appeared on her own feast day and reprimanded Mother and told her she was faulting in disobedience. Wow, could you imagine the Blessed Mother scolding you? She doesn't scold anybody. She's like, you know, I mean, a beautiful mother, right? No, she does. She does. So two days later, finally, Mother Mariana went to Bishop uh, Ribera, and he gave his permission. And he said to her, what took you so long? Why didn't you come to me sooner? So here's the amazing story of the making of the statue. This is an incredible story. So Our Lady came and appeared to her again, and she chose a local sculptor to carve the statue. Wouldn't you love to be that sculptor picked by the Blessed Virgin Mary? So when the statue was nearly complete, he decided that it was important that he visit Columbia. I met a lot of people from Columbia today. He went to Columbia to procure the finest paint to finish the face of Jesus and the face of Mary. So he left and he promised to return in time to complete his work, guess when? By February 2nd, 1611. Now, let's take a look at our next slide. This February 2nd is the feast of the purification. So, it's also the feast now of Our Lady of Good Success, or Candlemas, critically important. So, uh, but here's where it gets good. One day before his return, the statues of Mary and Jesus were miraculously completed on their own. So here he goes, all the way up to Columbia to get the finest paint, to come back and finish the face of Jesus and Mary, and he arrives the day before he arrives, they're finished. So what happened was Mother Mariana was at prayer at the time they were finished, and she saw a vision of the Holy Trinity in the tabernacle. She documented this. She also saw three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, kneeling before God. Can't even imagine beholding this vision. So in the next instant, the angels appeared with her in the upper choir. These are the choir chairs of the convent, accompanied by the founder, St. Francis of Assisi. 
Mother Mariana documented all this. As I said, the order was Franciscan, branched off from the Franciscans. And Mother said it was the archangels who completed the statues being directed by St. Francis. So here you've got St. Francis directing Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael to paint. I mean, whoa. To paint the faces of Jesus and Mary. St. Francis directed them. Now, when the statues were completed, St. Francis girded the statue of Mary with his own cincture. Wow. Then, miraculously, listen to this. Our Lady somehow became present in the statue and began, began singing the Magnificat. I mean, picture this. I mean, what would you do if you were Mother Mariana? I mean, to even be in the presence of this is unbelievable. The next day, the sculptor returned to find the statues miraculously completed. He didn't see Mother Mariani right away. And when he saw the faces, he fell to his knees and shouted, no human hand has done this. He quickly went to the bishop, who had been following the progress of the statues. And when the bishop saw the statues himself, he put down a written statement as a witness to the miracle. That's why this got approval. So many other miracles are associated with Our Lady of Good Success, but now we're going to finish with the prophecies. These are not, prophecy, remember, is not set in stone. Prophecy, almost every time Mary speaks, is the word if. If you do not stop offending God, this will happen. If you do not pray and repent, this will happen. Mary, as a messenger from heaven, she gives the way to avoid this. All right, so Mary and Jesus both revealed many things that would happen about her convent and the church and the world. Let's listen to some of this. Let's take a look at our next slide. I think this is kind of neat. I wish she would say this about the Marians, but Our Lady promised that the convent of Mother Mariana would survive until the end of the world. Here's a picture of the sisters. Beautiful habits. That was her first prophecy. Your, your convent will survive until the end of the world. Wow. But she had some other more humbling prophecies. She said bad governments and secret societies like the Freemasons. Now granted, the Freemasons weren't even formed yet. All right, when were they formed? 1717. Now, she said the Freemasons, she said Satan would work almost exclusively and completely in the end of the 20th century through Freemasonry. This was back in 1600s, before they were even formalized. So there's got to be some truth to it because Mir Mother Mariani wouldn't even have known what she was writing. She said the Freemasons and the secret societies and governments would persecute the church and good religious orders would be disbanded and expelled from the country of Ecuador. This happened. However, she said, one day there would arrive a truly Catholic president who would restore the rights of the church and consecrate Ecuador to the sacred heart of Jesus. Now get a load of this. This president was Don Gabriel Garcia Marino, and he reestablished re -established relations with Rome. Now listen to this. <clears throat> okay, he first appealed to Spain and France. He wanted to be Ecuador placed under the patronage of a Catholic crown. His pleas were unanswered. So he consecrated his country to the sacred heart of Jesus, just like was prophesied. I tell you the big four devotions, keep them up, please, everybody. 
Sacred Heart of Jesus, we celebrated, we did last night, First Fridays. Today, we're here in honor of the Immaculate Heart, the second great devotion. With that comes the Rosary, we'll pray here in a minute. The third, Divine Mercy. And the fourth, what comes from the heart of Jesus, the precious blood. The Divine Mercy image has all of those. Because you have Jesus' sacred heart emanating from us, the precious blood, the whole image is Divine Mercy, and it's under the mantle of Mary. So Our Lady also prophesies that this great man would be murdered by the enemies of the church. Now guess what? On August the 6th, today, in 1875, let's take a look at his picture. This is Gabriel Garcia Marino. On August 6th, today's date, 1875, he was martyred before the presidential palace by Masons. By Freemasons. Just like Mary prophesied. He was shot multiple times and cut to pieces by machetes. His chief killer, a mason, stood over him and literally, in a demonic growl, as it's described, said, we have won, we have killed God. And Garcia Marino, his final words, I die, but God does not die. Amen. Now let's keep going. Mary also prophesied about the church, saying that there would be a 19th century pope who would proclaim the dogmas of the Immaculate Conception and papal infallibility. Now notice she said pope, singular. What's fascinating is she then went further and stated that the pontiff, his pontiff, in during his pontificate, he would become a prisoner in the Vatican. This is all written down by Mother Mariana. You can look it up. And she said that this pope would be a prisoner in the Vatican because a worldly prince would usurp the papal states. Now here's what's amazing. This prophecy was fulfilled to the letter, to the T, during the pontificate of Pius IX. Y'all know Pope Leo XIII, in my opinion, is the greatest pope we ever had, but I have a new I've been researching and studying Pius IX. This guy's incredible. Declared the dogmas of the Immaculate Conception of papal infallibility. He proclaimed both of those dogmas and was also a prisoner in the Vatican. I mean, how do you, how does Mother Mariani know this? He was a prisoner in the Vatican because they dissolved the papal states during the reunification of Italy under King Victor Emmanuel happened exactly like she said. So let's watch a quick video. This video is only two and a half minutes. But this video does a great job of showing you the prophecies that happened, given to us by Our Lady of Good Success. Let's take a look. It's two and a half minutes. Near the end of the 16th century, a nun named Mother Mariana at the Convent of the Immaculate Conception in Quito, Ecuador, experienced numerous apparitions. In one vision, the convent chapel where Mariana was praying became immersed in a smoky darkness. The tabernacle opened and Christ crucified emerged as he was on Golgotha. Mariana felt she was being chastised by what she saw, but she heard God say, You are not to blame. The chastisement will be for the 20th century. I will punish heresy, blasphemy, and impurity. The message is aimed at our time. In another vision, the Blessed Mother holding the Christ child appeared, lamenting that in the future, innocence will almost no longer be found in children, nor modesty in women. Mariana was tortured by these visions. Our Lady asked Mother Mariana whether she would be willing to pray and suffer for the people of the 20th century and of these times. And Mother said yes. The Blessed Virgin also predicted the attacks on the sacraments. Baptism and confirmation would be ignored. The Holy Eucharist profaned. Marriage attacked. Last rites prohibited. And holy orders defiled. Woe to the religious in the 20th century. They will tremble before the dread judgment of God, the Blessed Mother warned. Our Lady even told Mother Mariana, 
that the message of our Lady of Good Success would remain hidden for several hundred years and would only come out to the general public at the time of its fulfillment. And now it's coming out everywhere. And in a final vision, the nun saw the sanctuary light go out at 3 a.m. while she prayed. And Our Lady actually told Mother Mariana that darkness would cover the earth. The Blessed Mother predicted a, quote, corruption of customs. And after the middle of the 20th century, a great immorality will invade the clergy and priests will become unworthy of their office. The priests left to uphold the church will be persecuted, and the innocence of children will be targeted to achieve the corruption of the world. Just what appears that everything is lost. Mama said, I will come down from heaven with my son, and I will chain Lucifer. We will cast him into hell. The last prophecy of Our Lady of Good Success, as she's come to be known, and the only one not yet realized, is that after a horrible night, the church will be restored, and the tyranny of the devil will end. Okay, so we got a couple questions here. I'll get to those after the broadcast here, but a powerful video that shows us some of these prophecies and what Mary said. They've all come true, every one of them, except church restoration. And again, we believe that is starting to happen. And with it will come the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. Incredible. It's one of the most important prophecies in what's happening. Now, Mary told Mother that there would be a great crisis of faith and morals in the church and in the world. This crisis, she said, would reach a critical stage after the midpoint of the 20th century. Now, what happened right after the midpoint of the 20th century? That was before the midpoint. The 60s. The 60s started out pure. I've said this before. Do you know that before 1962, violent crimes were low, almost decreasing. After 1962, they skyrocketed. Abortions were very low, even though it wasn't legalized. But illegal abortions, after 1962, they were low. After 1962, they skyrocketed. Unwed pregnancies, very low, even declining. After 1962, they skyrocketed. Divorces. Very low, actually declining. After 1962, they skyrocketed. What happened in 1962? The Supreme Court removed prayer from schools. Now it gets worse. All of a sudden comes a sexual revolution, telling the mother that she's not to be a mother. Birth control on demand, legalized pornography. Pornography was then brought into the forefront of society. Contraception was then brought into the forefront of society. It was the rebellion, the, the sexual revolution, the lies that the devil brought. This is so, so big that we have to see what happened. Now, it was a revolution in Western culture. It really was. That radically changed traditional faith and morals. All by the late 60s. Now, let's go to our next slide. When Our Lady showed Mother Mariana a vision of the modern situation, Mother, the servant of God that she was, declared that if she had not been miraculously sustained, she would have died from shock. Mother was shown a vision of the 1960s, probably Woodstock. <laughs> And she was shocked. She said, I would have died of shock. You can even imagine the reaction of this 16th century cloistered nun to seeing people walking around naked and irreverent at Woodstock, sexual relations, promiscuity going on right in front of other people, the fashions, the customs that even entered into the church. God bless there's still some places maintaining, like when you go to EWTN, they have shirts, sweatshirts, and sweatpants at the door that if you're immodestly dressed, you got to put them on. God bless them. But there was one corrupted custom, she said, more than any other, that stands out among the rest. 
What was that one most corrupted custom, meaning custom meaning that used to be done, then it got corrupted and done now in another way? What was that? What was that one most corrupted custom of all after the midpoint of the 20th century? Marriage is second. Attendance at mass. Plummeted. The number of Catholics attending mass in the United States plummeted in the second half of the 20th century. According to the Catholic World Report, in 1958, three-fourths of Catholics regularly attended Mass. By 2002, and it's even worse now, 20 years later, the number has dropped to barely 20%. You went from 78% to 20%. People who regularly attend Mass. Mary said, innocence will be lost in children. Modesty will be lost in women. There will be almost no virgin souls. Now, what did she mean by that? What did Mary mean that there will be almost no virgin souls? She's referring to women religious. Now, we as Marians, we see a lot of beautiful nuns come here, so we don't really understand the loss of women's religious. But according to the index of leading Catholic indicators in 2003, from 1965 to 1963, listen to this, this is the most shocking stat I've read in a long time. Not only was there a 66% decrease in religious sisters, there was a 94% decrease in teaching sisters. 94%. That's why when I hear my dad and his friends talk about the nuns that used to teach them, you don't hear that anymore. Nobody's being taught by the nuns because there's been a 94% decrease in teaching sisters. Man, I haven't been praying enough. I realized when I was doing this, I haven't been praying enough for a return to the, to the vocation of teaching sisters. You know Why? Because half the Catholic schools have closed since the mid-1958. Since 1958, half of the Catholic schools have closed, over half. All you have to do is turn on the radio or the TV or the internet now to see the innocence of children is basically being blasted by Satan. Not to mention these horrible sexual education classes and programs in schools. My gosh, the state of Florida was lambasted it, it, on a lie saying you can't say the word gay. The word, or uh, in, the, in the document of the proposal of Governor DeSantis that you can't say gay, the, the word gay wasn't even mentioned. They said it says in there that you can't say the word gay. The, gay, the word gay wasn't even mentioned in it. But what was mentioned in it was to protect our children from the debauchery that is our sexual education. Why does a first grade student need to learn about the joys of homosexual sexual activity? That's absolutely horrid. A first grader doesn't need to learn about the joys of marriage and heterosexual activity yet, let alone the disorder. So Mother Mariani wrote all this down. This stuff has all happened. A modest dress, Mary said to her, especially for girls. Sexual innuendo for boys. Violence, crude humor, disrespect for parental authority. Oh my gosh, I, I said that in a talk earlier. When I, before I became a priest, my five favorite shows, King of Queens, Everybody Loves Raymond, Married with Children, The Simpsons, and Home Improvement. It was the only shows I watched. It was in my 20s, 30s, in my 20s and 30s. You know, it didn't come to years later that I realized that every one of those shows showed the father and the husband as a bumbling buffoon. Absolutely incapable. As some of these social movements today stand for, destruction of the patriarchy. You can't get more wrong than that. And this is what's happening. Mother Mary talked about this. All you have to do is look. It's all supported by modern media. All supported. Now, Our Lady also brought up 
each of the sacraments and revealed how they would be profaned. Okay? Alex, can you help him in the back with the statue? So, Our Lady said that the sacraments would be profaned. I don't think that's the right one. I, I think, I can't tell. I think that's the wrong statue. But hey, Our Lady is Our Lady, right? That's okay. That's okay. God bless her. So, the sacrament of marriage, she said. Now, this is where we get into. There was a comment made about marriage. Our Lady focused heavily on marriage. What did she say? She said, quote, the sacrament of marriage will be attacked and iniquitous laws will be made to make it easy to live in sin, socially acceptable to live in sin. The staggering, staggering amount of cohabitation is off the charts now. In fact, you're expected. I remember one of the first young ladies that I dated. She's a good girl, absolutely good girl. In North Carolina, I had not come back to my faith yet. I moved down to North Carolina, and we had been dating a few months. And she said, well, are you going to move in with me, or should I move in with you? And all my friends are like, yeah, you'll save on money. You need to test drive that car before you buy it. This is the way of thinking of today. And you know, praise be to God, even though I will not claim that I was some holy and, and perfect Catholic, I wasn't. I really wasn't even back into my faith yet, but somehow the Holy Spirit protected me. And as much as I cared for her, and as much as I wanted to be with her, and in fact, even thought about marriage, she was not the lady I was later engaged to, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't move in with her because not saying I I was perfect, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't put that stamp of I'm living in a state of sin on this. And she left me. She said, you're nuts. How can we ever get to know each other? How can we ever see if we can live together? I mean, this is the concept. This is the mentality of what has happened to society since the midpoint of the 20th century. This was never heard of prior to the midpoint of the 20th century. But again, there's hope because this message isn't all gloom and doom. It's about the restoration of the church, but we can see Mary knows what she's talking about. Now let's keep going. Now, Our Lady said this sacrament of marriage would be attacked and these iniquitous laws will make it easy to live in sin. As I said, cohabitation. Catholic marriages now that end in divorce are skyrocketing, and the Supreme Court decision in favor of gay marriage makes it quite clear that all of this has come true. Mary said that many children would be born out of wedlock and great numbers would be not baptized. Now let's bring Our Lady. This is the small one. God bless you. Thank you. It's not. Okay, the sisters make this. This was made by the sisters in Ecuador, right, right, brother? This was made by the conceptionist sisters of Our Lady, I mean, sorry, Our Lady of Good Success, by the conceptionist sisters in Ecuador. Is that not beautiful? Hand carved in wood. That's gorgeous. If you come to our Marian Helper Center and come to Mass, she's there. It's a bigger one too, right? Alex X disappeared. <laughs> Beautiful. Our Lady of Good Success, watch over us. So let's finish here because <clears throat> the Supreme Court has made it clear that it's okay. This is accepted now. And if you speak against it, you could be... In fact, when I went to Canada, and this was actually several years ago, I flew into Canada and they asked why I was coming. I'm in a collar. And I said, uh, they said, who are you? What do you do? I said, I'm a Roman Catholic priest. And they called their version of Homeland Security. I don't even know what it's called in Canada. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I am the keynote speaker at a conference in Ottawa. And the guy says, let me see your notes. I was like, what? He said, let me see your notes. 
I said, I use bulleted fragments. If you see my papers up here, none of these are sentences. I'm not reading anything. I got bulleted fragments to give me quotes and dates and topics so that I stay focused. I said, I don't really even write my talks out. And he looks at me and he says, well, you know, any mention, any mention by you Catholics against homosexuality is a crime, is, could be a hate crime. I said, well, that's not the topic of my talk. But if somehow the question is answered or my talk leads by the Holy Spirit in that direction, I will speak what the Catholic Church teaches. That's my job as a priest. And he didn't say I would, but he said I could end up in jail. What in the world is happening? Profanation of marriage. Boy, did she focus on that. Now, Mary said children would be born out of wedlock in great numbers, as I said, would not be baptized. Since 1965, a 50% decrease in Catholic weddings. That's shocking. 50% decrease in Catholic weddings. And guess what? A 50% decrease in infant baptism. That's according to the Catholic World Report. 50% decrease in baptisms. At the same time, guess what's happened to annulments? <laughs> Do you know how many annulments there were in the United States in 1968? 338. 338. Do you know how many there were in 2002 and it's skyrocketed since then? 60,000. 60,000. Unbelievable. Last section. I'm going to try to finish this in eight minutes. Mary said, anointing of the sick will be little esteemed and many will die without receiving it and their souls lost. Shocking. She said there is this thing, false sentimentality, that the fear of the families and the friends of upsetting the dying person. You know, I was at the nursing home and I went in um, to do an anointing at the Carmelite sisters a while back, before, it was actually before COVID. And I went in to do the anointing, God bless them, and I was walking down the hall and somebody saw it. She said, are you a Catholic priest? I said, yes. And she said, do you know, um, do you think you could... Father, do you think you could anoint my grandmother? So I asked the normal questions. You know, is she Catholic? Is she willing to accept the grace? I asked all the right questions. And she said, I don't think so. But can we try? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So I walked in the room. I didn't even get into the room. And the sister and the brother basically threw me out. You are not going to scare mom to death. And the woman who brought me in, I think she was maybe another sibling or, or a niece or something, she said, mom is going to pass within probably the next day or two. They literally would not let me in the room because they didn't want mom scared. <laughs> let me tell you, that is a complete false sentimentality. You gotta worry about their salvation. And when, I, when her, she saw me as I was near in the room, she didn't look scared. I think the scare was more in the, the brother and the sister. Mom kind of looked at me and I, they're kicking me out of the room. God bless them. I believe God that day did give the grace of the sacrament because of the faith of the one woman who tried to bring me in there. It's like the four men and the paralytic, right? All right, so let's finish up here. Now, Mary said that this false sentimentality, fear of upsetting the dying person, so no priest will be called. Man, have we seen this. We've also seen an attack on the anointing of the sick, not only the anointing of the sick, but the sacrament of confession. Why? Huge heresy universalism. Everybody will be saved. You go to a funeral nowadays, 
Nobody even bothers praying for the poor person. Every, well, everybody says is they're in heaven right now. That's good. We want hope. But you got to come to the realization that that person might need prayer. Mary also spoke about, spoke about how our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament would be defaced, defamed, desecrated, profaned. Quote, Mary said, the enemies of Jesus Christ insti instigated by the demon will steal consecrated hosts from the churches so that they might profane the Eucharist. We've had it happen here. I watch every person who receives in the hand. That's my issue with receiving in the hand. And the woman walked around, she saw her put it in her pocket. She started walking very fast down the aisle way. I left the communion line. I said, ma'am, excuse me. She didn't listen. She didn't turn around. I said, ma'am, excuse me. She walks right out the back door. I chased her out the shrine. Now, I wasn't mean. But I said, ma'am, you need to consume that or please return the host to me. She said, I'm going to eat it outside. I said, no. No. This is what's happening. Mary said, my most holy son will see himself cast onto the ground, trampled upon by irreverent feet. Let's look at our next slide. This is all over the internet. The internet today abounds with videos that show desecration of Eucharist, and yet that's not considered a hate crime. Seriously? But somebody accidentally saying a little bad word will be cancel culture to the day is long. Much, much worse videos on there that I can't even believe. I saw some of the most horrid videos of the Eucharist. You just want to jump through the screen. Now, Mary said Jesus would be profaned, especially by the many sacrilegious communions. This was surprising. How could receiving communion be a bad thing? She said this is a big one. Big one. One priest said that this can be easily seen at his local parish by comparing the very, very short lines in confession on Saturday with the very long lines of communion on Sunday. And I thought his quote was very good. I didn't know if he wanted me to use his name, but this is what he said. Either we have many more saints in the church than ever in history, or there's a lot of sacrilegious communions going on. Which one do you think the answer is? Probably sacrilegious communions. And perhaps this might be because 70% of Catholics born after 1958 consider the Holy Eucharist but nothing more than a symbol. That's according to the Index of Leading Catholic Indicators of 2003. 70% of Catholics born after 1958 think the Eucharist is just a symbol. The Eucharist is not just a symbol. It is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Read John 6. All right, vocations. Mother Mary talked about the vocation crisis in the modern priesthood. This was told by Our Lady Good Success. In 1965, there were 50 thousand U.S. seminarians studying for the priesthood. 50,000. By 2002, 4,700. A decrease of 90%. Thank God the Marian fathers are getting these guys. Tells me that God has a plan for divine mercy, and just like you told St. Faustina, divine mercy is mankind's last hope of salvation. If divine mercy wasn't this important to God, we wouldn't be getting these phenomenal vocations. There are some religious communities. My dad was taught, I can't mention the name of the religious community, but he was taught by what used to be a fabulous religious community of sisters in Michigan. They're all now elderly, dying, haven't had a postulant in 28 years and my dad wanted to go see. He got wind that one of the nuns that used to teach him, she was a real young lady when she taught him, was still alive. So he stopped by one day at the convent, the mother house, and I walked in, and I had just uh, taken first vows with the Marian father, so I knew the importance of, of this. And I walk in, and there in a swan vase on the coffee table in the lobby is the Blessed Sacrament. So the first thing I did is I said, is this consecrated? 
They had a consecrated host in a swan vase on a coffee table. Have we lost our minds? And is it any wonder why this religious order has not received a vocation in 28 years? Praise be to God that we Marian fathers are spreading message of mercy in a, you'll never hear a Marian ever from this pulpit teach that abortion is okay. Uh, transgenderism is okay. Um, redefining marriage is okay. You will never hear that from the pulpit. And now that I'm provincial superior, I'll make sure you never hear that from the pulpit. <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be to God. So, this decrease, Our Lady told Mother Mariani that the effects of secular education will be the reason for the lack of priestly and religious vocations. They're killing us in the schools. Remember, education is to teach you how to think, not what to think. We have turned our education system, instead of being how to think, like the Socratic method, Aristotle. We don't teach our kids how to think. Our kids are indoctrinated into what to think. Please, parents, stand up. Go to your city council or your school uh, council meetings, and it's unbelievable. Now, this secular education, guess how much that we have today? Guess how much secular education there was in Ecuador in the 1600s? 400 years ago. Guess how much secular education there was? Zero. Zero. Approximately 50%, as I said, of U.S. Catholic high schools have closed since 1965. Now, Mary said that the sacrament of holy orders will be ridiculed, oppressed, and despised. A lot of that is our own fault. Self-inflicted wounds. Yes, we we'll do another talk on that later. But the church of today, do you know this? Many groups are guilty of scandal. The Boy Scouts. Do you know that 85% of abuse happens in the home? This is not me making this up. Again, this is the John Jay report and the Jenkins study out of Penn State confirmed 85% of abuse happens in the home. 14% of abuse happens in public schools and extracurricular activities. And 1% happens in religious institutions. And of that 1%, the Catholic Church is in the bottom half. Now, am I, am I trying to rationalize this scandal? Absolutely not. If a priest is found guilty of anything to harm a child especially, he's got to be removed. There's not, nobody is arguing this, but listen to this. The Catholic Church today has responded to the scandal with far stricter safeguards than any other institution. No schools, no Boy Scouts, the Catholic Church. To a fault. Do you know the Dallas Charter now with the Catholic Church? The priest is guilty until proven innocent. The priest is not innocent until proven guilty. Just read the Dallas Charter. You have to pull the priest out and then do the investigation. By then, everybody's labeled him as guilty. I'm not, again, please, I'm not rationalizing. If you have been a victim, God bless you. And I, there are no words for me to describe how that is wrong and unacceptable. But I also am a good friend with a priest that's in prison that refuses to admit his guilt because he is not guilty, being falsely accused. I know that that happens as well. Now, Our Lady said, these depraved priests, now we are talking about the guilty, who will scandalize the Christian people will incite the hatred of bad Christians and the enemies of the Catholic Church to fall upon all the priests. Wow. Wow. She also said this apparent triumph of Satan will bring enormous sufferings to the good priests. Wow. Mary said wealthy, okay, here's one. Mary said wealthy and powerful Catholics will stand by and do nothing and witness the oppression of the church, the persecution of virtue, the desecration of morals, the triumph of evil without Ever doing anything to help stop it. Not employing any resources of theirs to stop it. Mary warned against this. All right, to finish, Mary promised, though, good success to this current crisis in the church. Mary promised it. She said, when it looks like evil has triumphed, 
This, however, will mark the arrival of my hour when I, in a marvelous way, will dethrone the proud and cursed Satan trampling under my feet. I think we're getting close. This triumph is the restoration of the Catholic Church. People always ask me all the time, Father, what's the triumph of the Immaculate Heart? What's the triumph of the Immaculate Heart? If you believe the message of Our Lady Good Success, you know what the triumph of the Immaculate Heart is? The restoration of the church. Incredible. And lastly, Mother Mariana was a victim soul. Our Lady asked Mother if she would be a victim soul to restore the church. Now get a load of this. Mother Mariani asked, or sorry, Mary asked Mother if she would be a victim soul for the church at the end of the 20th century. And she said, yes. I believe that's why we're seeing some of the fruit like these guys. The coming back to the church of the letters that we got to stack this thick. I'm seeing it. I'm starting to see it. So our last slide. Here's our last slide. A victim for the 20th century and beyond. She agreed. She accepted her suffering. And I think we're now benefiting from those graces that she won through our vocations at the Marian Fathers, through divine mercy being spread all around the world, for you coming to this channel. You don't think it's not coincidence that you are here watching this? Some of our videos now have gotten millions of views. One video. Then we got a second. Then we got a third. All over a million views. God's bringing divine mercy to the world. But Mother Mariani told Mary that she did not want to be known or celebrated. She said no. Mary told the humble nun that everything would not begin to be really known until the end of the 20th century. This is the apparition of our times, this in Fatima. That's because in our days, devotion to Our Lady of Good Success is so crucial. This is important. This explains why you may not have heard of Our Lady of Good Success before now, but now you are. All right? No, it wasn't a secret. It was just obscure, kind of like Jesus' 30 years before his public ministry. It was not hidden. It was obscured. He was kept safe in obscurity until the right time came for his public ministry. This is exactly like Our Lady Good Success. It's been obscured until the right time came that the world needs to know it. We are not talking, as I said, about the end of the world, but a restoration of the church. That is why this is so important. Devotion to this is spreading everywhere. Praise be to God. And Mother Mary and her triumph of the Immaculate Heart is the center of this. What does that mean? The restoration of the church. How do we bring it about? Devotion to our Immaculate Heart. What are we going to do right now? First Saturdays. This is all God's providential hand. And so stay with us right now. I'm sorry I went nine minutes over. Brother Mark is going to uh, cancel this live stream. We're going to go down and vest. We're going to come back. We're going to expose the Blessed Sacrament. We're going to do First Saturday's devotion tonight. We invite you to stay with us. If you can't, then please watch it. We'll keep it up on YouTube. But we're going to walk you through what Our Lady asked to do for First Saturdays. Why? Why did Mary do this? To make reparation for the sins and ingratitude against her Immaculate Heart. Why did she ask us to do it? So that we could usher in the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. What's the message of Our Lady of Good Success, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart? Praise be to God, now and forever. And may Our Lady watch over you now and forever. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Brother Mark will reboot, and we will begin the devotion of first Saturdays. Thank you.